Fáilte a while, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look into the Irish witch, the Hag of Biara. There are plenty of Irish witches and we will get to them. We're going to do a series on them. But for now, for today, on Halloween, we're going to look at the Hag of Biara. Now before we get into the story, if you could hit like, if you could subscribe, it would be absolutely amazing and you'll be an absolute legend. It really helps our channel grow and we're almost at 400 subscribers. Now, without any further delay, let's dive into the story of the Hag of Biara. Legend says that a rock lying on a lonely stretch of land overlooking the sea near Iris on the Biara Peninsula in County Cork is in fact the petrified head of the Quilock Biara, or the Hag of Biara. The Hag was apparently a goddess of the Tuatha de Danann, the ancient immortal rulers of Ireland. She existed through the long eternity of the world, ever renewing and passing through many lifetimes from youth to old age and again returning to youth. The legend tells that through her life she took seven husbands, all mighty warrior kings. But then, as the power and majesty disappeared from the modern world, she retreated to Cork, where her endless years caught up with her, and she became a miserable, withered old hag. She would still be seen, however, flying off on her broomstick to many parts of Ireland, such as Hag's Head, the southernmost tip of the Cliffs of Moher in County Clare, or Sleeve and Callick, or Hag's Mountain, at Loch Crew in County Mead, where a curbstone known as Hag's Chair can be found. There is a story about the Hag, which can be found in many different forms. This version is from Douglas Hyde's 1915 book, Legends of Saints and Sinners. The Hag was very old, and she herself did not know her own age, nor did anyone else. There was a friar and his boy journeying one day, and they came into the house of the old woman of Yarra. God save you, said the friar. The same man save yourself, said the hag. You're welcome. Sit down at the fire and warm yourself. The friar sat down, and when he had well finished warming himself, he began to talk and discourse with the old hag. If it's no harm of me to ask you, I'd like to know your age, because I know you were very old. It is no harm at all to ask me, said the hag. I'll answer you as well as I can. There is never a year since I came to age that I used to not kill a cow and throw the bones of the cow up into the loft which is above your head. If you wish to know my age, you can send your boy up to the loft and count the bones. True was the tale. The friar sent the boy up on the loft and the boy began counting the bones. And with all the bones that were on the loft, he had no room on the loft itself to count them and he told the friar that he would have to throw bones down to the floor. Down with them, said the friar, and I'll keep count of them from below. The boy began throwing them down from above, and the friar began writing down the number, until he was about tired out, and he asked the boy if he had nearly counted them all. And the boy answered the friar from the loft that he had not even one corner of the loft empty yet. If that's the way of it, come down out of the loft and throw the bones up again, said the friar. The boy came down and he threw up the bones, and so the friar was just as wise coming in as he was going out. In the ancient poem, The Lament of the Old Woman of Biara, the hag grieves her loss of youth, beauty and potency, and she denounces the values of the youth of the day. A tide has come to me as to the sea. It is riches you love, and not people. As for us, when we lived, it was people we loved. The hag came to a sticky end after crossing paths with St. Catherine, who preached Christianity in Kilcatherine and the surrounding districts. She proved to be a threat to the hag's powers and to her standing amongst the people of Yara. One day she came across St. Catherine fast asleep on a pillock near the Iris, and seeing her prayer book, which she presumed was to be the source of her wisdom and strength, she grasped it and ran off. A cripple who lived nearby, however, witnessed these events and shouted to wake the saint, who promptly ran after her and after a bitter battle recovered her prayer book. She uttered a few magic words and turned the hag to stone. 
So here she waits in frozen silence. For the time a certain ring might appear around the moon, and the blackbirds change the song they sing. For then she will recover her youth, seek an eighth husband, and again take her position amongst the warrior kings of Ireland. And so that concludes our story of the Hag of Biara. I really hope you enjoyed today's videos. Happy Halloween to all of you. Remember, this is Jay. These are our legends. Good night and good luck. We'll see you real soon. Woo! <laughs>